RV allows you to view a lot of different assets, lots of different types of assets, just by simply dragging and dropping those into a session. And what it will give you is essentially a list of all the things that you've put in here. So I've got my composited kind of beauty pass here. I've got my logo animation here. And I've got my text animation here. And then I can combine that with something like a movie file. So these are actually image sequences. I'm actually going to take this background animation, drop that in, add it as a source, and I'll scale this up a little bit. And now what you'll see is I also have this background animation. So I can see these all in sequence. I can see them all in what's called a layout view. And now you can see I can see them in these quadrants. So I have the four different sequences that I need to composite. I can also see it in a stacked view, which is the equivalent of a composite. So now I have, and I'm going to remove this one, now I have my three layers that are actually all comped together in a media player, essentially. So it's, it's not an After Effects. It doesn't have the full functionality. So there you can see the letters are behind. I can actually reorder that. There they go. Now the letters are in front. It's not After Effects, but if you want a quick view your sequences and you want to be able to see them without loading them into a compositor. It's a really nice way of visualizing that stuff. Other cool things you can do is going into, for instance, gamma correct. You can do gamma correction, other types of color correction in, on the fly, which is pretty, pretty cool. You can also do things like sweeps. I have tools here, uh, one of which is a wipe rather, which would allow me to actually wipe the effect of the layer on and off so I can see what does that look like with the layer, what does it look like without, and I can actually kind of just fade that in and out, which is, is a nice way of working. And I can do the same thing with any layer. So now I'm just basically peeling away the layers of the image. And it's super fast as well. So it's a nice way of of kind of a pre-check before you get into your compositor. Now of course ultimately we're going to get into the compositor. That's the, the next step in the process. So I'm actually going to go into After Effects and we're going to take everything that we did, comp it together, and then make a couple of changes and then talk a little bit about how we can get back to Maya to make some of those changes. So in After Effects I'm going to load the same uh, simple composite. So I've got my background which I created in Premiere. So what you can see here is that um, I have the, the text that I may or may not want to use. This text was actually created um, in Maya, but I might actually want to use uh, After Effects text tool to actually create the text effect. So in order to do that, I have to be able to track the 3D elements in my scene, which I can't really do right now because the 3D elements um, are just you know actual 2D, they're not 3D. But I can go back to Maya and I can extract this kind of 3D information just using some simple tracking tools. So that's what I want to do now, is I want to track the motion of that M. And I'm going to do that by creating a simple locator. So I create a locator, and I'll take that and then just snap that down into place. And I might want to rotate that around just so it aligns better. I think that should be about right. But you can see the locator will follow the camera motion because the camera is moving, but it doesn't follow the M motion. So now I want to take that M, shift select the locator, and then I want to go in and constrain this. So I'm just going to use a simple constraint tool. I'll do a parent constraint, and what you'll see is the locator will actually follow that because it's actually constrained to a particular point on that animated M. So we have a built-in tool that now allows us to export to Adobe After Effects. So we've got a send to Adobe After Effects, and we've got a couple of things here that we want to do. One is you want to take the locator, and you want to take the camera, and any other locators that you might want to track, and you want to create a selection set. And this is just a, essentially a group that basically de defines what I want to send to Adobe, or what I want to send to After Effects. And then from here, I just say send to After Effects. So now we'll run through the animation, bake out everything it needs, and then I can throw on the desktop my file. So I'll call this uh, Maya locator track, or whatever you want to call it. So that will create a file that will store all that animation. And now I can go back to Adobe After Effects. One thing that's important here, in order to do this, is you have to select the composition that you want to import this into, especially if you have more than one. But in general, you have to select the composition. And then there's a plugin called Maya Import, which will load you go to Windows, and it'll be the bottom one here. We provide the plugin, so as part of the Maya installation, you get this plugin. Very simple to install. It's just a file. And then you just say Import, and you point this to the JSON file, which is a text file that you created. 
and that will basically process that file and then it will create locators that will match the locators from the Miocene. So if you'll see, I have one for the camera in the middle, which is the center of interest of the camera. And then if I select this locator, you can see this one actually tracks the motion of the logo as it flies through space. Now what I can do is instead of using this Maya text uh, animation from Maya, uh, the 3D animation, I can actually build this in Adobe After Effects if I so choose. So what I want to do is actually create a simple piece of text. I'm going to use the text tool here and I'll just use the same Maya, whoops, let's do that one more time, Maya 2017 and I'll scale that down a little bit. Um, right now this is still just 2D. I can actually just take this layer here, make it a 3D layer and then I'm going to parent this to the locator so that it will follow the locator. And you'll notice that I used shift to parent that and it just snapped right into place. Now I can actually just do a quick offset. I've got some transform values in here where I can go in and I can add a little bit of positioning here. I might want to move it up like this and I might want to scale it up like so. Actually, let's offset that a little bit more here. And then likewise, we'll push that in here. And now this is actually linked to that locator so that if I were to go in and play back the animation, you can see that as the logo goes, so does the Maya text, the Maya 2017 text. Now, one thing you'll notice is that it rotates and it follows the position, but it does not scale. Now, I could try to fix that here, but the beauty of this, and actually I think I need a little bit more scale. Let's just correct that a little bit. There we go. The beauty of this is I can go back to Maya and I can process that part in Maya. So I can say I also want to take the scale from the M and I want to pass that onto the locator using a simple uh, scale constraint. And what that will do is it will again, as the M scales, the locator now scales as well. So it's tracking the position, rotation, and the scale. All I have to do, I've already created my set, is just say send to After Effects. It'll process everything once more. Uh, and now I'll just overwrite the original file could create a new file, but if I overwrite the original file, I have the option now of just simply updating based on that original file. And now anything that's changed will get updated in Adobe After Effects based on what changed on the Maya side. So now you can see that, let me actually turn off that trail there. You can see the logo, the text rather, starts out at zero or scaled way down. It starts to scale up, starts to rotate into place, and then, and then kind of snaps into place right there with the letter. And then, of course, I can use anything in Adobe After Effects to modify this. If I want to fade it in and fade it out, or if I want to add some other kind of special effect to it, I can. But it's a pretty nice way of working, again, being able to go back and forth between the two. So that pretty much wraps up the presentation. Again, this is kind of the, the final product that I showed before. All of that kind of comes together in this four or five second animated sequence. and. Uh, yeah, there you go.